WFTV tonight. As the future of Disney's self-governing powers remains rocky tonight, we're breaking down the ripple effect for the wallets of families across Central Florida. It means you. Good evening. I'm Martha Sagowski. And I'm Greg Wormuth. The State House has joined their Senate colleagues and the governor taking aim at Disney's special privileges. Let's dive into our big story tonight. Today's move is the latest response to Disney's opposition to the parental rights and education law, which opponents are calling the don't say gay law. Today on the House floor in Tallahassee, there was no debate, simply a vote. Afterward, Democrats said that the Disney legislation is a distraction from the abortion legislation, the redrawing of district lines, and other real issues that are facing Floridians. They're trying to control the narrative, uh, talking about Disney Mouse, uh, right, Disney right. World, and, and his fight with the mouse instead of helping people get a house, right? right. We have so many issues here in the state of Florida that we're not addressing. This legislation now goes to Governor Ron DeSantis for his signature. This legislation is going to have substantial tax consequences for residents of Orange and Osceola counties. They're going to have to pick up the $160 million a year of Disney's taxes that are getting wiped off the books. Nick Pampantonis live in Orlando tonight working this story. Nick, the county tax collector says there's only one way out of this. It would be that 20 to 25 percent property tax increase that you heard just a moment ago. And yes, the county would be allowed to do that. It equates to a more than $500 for the average household every single year. Between property insurance rates going through the roof right now, rent going through the roof, this is the last thing Central Florida needs at this time. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Clerk will lock the machine, announce the vote. 70 days, 38 days. Show the bill passes. Read the next bill. Over the screams of Democrats angry about the circus that rolled into Tallahassee this week, House Republicans spending 50 seconds on a bill that dissolved Disney's 55-year-old Reedy Creek District, the latest lightning round in a 72-hour storm. We're not looking for raising taxes. We're not looking for retaliation. In a quiet Orlando office far removed from the chaos, Orange County tax collector Scott Randolph was prepared to call statements like that a lie. They basically dissolved the city of Orlando and said, 72 hours. That's what they've put into play. Something of that size means major consequences. Unlike what many believe, Disney pays the same property taxes as everyone else. The Reedy Creek District allowed Disney to tax itself extra to build roads and operate a fire department. Taxes that aren't allowed outside of Reedy Creek. The moment that Reedy Creek doesn't exist is the moment that, that those taxes don't exist exist. You're literally taking $163 million a year of taxes that Disney pays to Reedy Creek and wiping it down to zero. Orange and Osceola County taxpayers will have to carry every single dollar of that burden starting next year. Thanks to the state legislature, there aren't many ways the counties can deal with it. They can't raise sales taxes, tourism taxes, or levy impact fees on Disney property because all properties must be taxed equally. That leaves property taxes, and when you wipe out the equivalent of 20% of the tax revenue in the county... I don't see how Orange County doesn't raise property taxes by 20 to 25%. 20 25%. That's what Orange County would probably have to do to cover this financial situation. Even if the state backtracks on this plan, Randolph says the damage has already been done. Orange County staff will spend the next eight months planning to shoulder the load. And the realization that the rules can change overnight gives other companies something to consider. I think that really would make anybody talking about moving jobs to Florida really take a hard pause and think whether that's a really a good move for them. Now, Nick, as you said, there are going to be a lot of negotiations between now and next year. What are some of the issues that they'll have to solve? So many things. What happens to the employees that work for Reedy Creek? What happens to the contracts that businesses sign with Reedy Creek? Are they still even in effect? How do Bay Lake and Lake Buena Vista factor into this because Disney still controls them? And for that matter, we still don't know how Disney plans to respond to this. We are three days into this right now, and we are just getting started. Live in Orlando, Nick Papatotis, WFTV tonight. Osceola County sent us a statement on the Reedy Creek situation. It says in part, quote, 
Osceola County government will begin an analysis to understand the impacts and preparation for this going into effect, including evaluating any shifts in cost to Osceola as a result. As Disney and Reedy Creek have been self-contained, we are uncertain of what fiscal responsibilities will be encumbered after June 2023. Over the many years, Disney has been a strong community partner, and we expect that relationship to continue as we work together for a transition plan. The Disney drama wasn't the only noteworthy news in Tallahassee today. The state house also signed off on a congressional redistricting plan. Democrats are furious and many planted themselves actually in the center of the chamber in protest. Orlando Representative Geraldine Thompson joined in. She said via a voicemail that Republicans allow the governor to draw his own map and eliminate black opportunity districts. Here's part of her recording. It feels like we're back in the civil rights movement. We're trying to uh, talk collegially with people who just don't want to listen. It is my belief and your belief that no member of this chamber has the opportunity to shut down our process, to shut down a job that members, that people of the public and the people of Florida have asked us to do. The plan is now headed to the governor. Looking locally, Congressional District 10 is currently held by U.S. Congresswoman Val Demings, who's leaving that seat to run for Senate. That district would see its black voting population decrease.